Start learning to love God by loving those whom you cannot love. The more you remember others with kindness and generosity, the more you forget yourself. And when you completely forget yourself, you find God. Pure love is matchless in majesty. It has no parallels in power, and there is no darkness it cannot dispel. Aloha, I'm Cindy Palos, and I'm very happy to be here today. What you just heard is a Meher Baba quote, and we're going to be talking today to two beautiful people. I'm so happy to have with me Dr. Meredith Moon and Bill Stevens. Dr. Meredith Moon is a wonderful doctor, counselor, dream therapist, who I just have heard so many marvelous things about. She truly does serve and help so many people. Bill Stevens is an author. Eight, nine books? Ten books? Uh, five adult books and, uh, and about 13 children's books, many of the children's books in collaboration with my wife, Peggy. That's wonderful. And your latest book, Souls on Fire, and before that was Footprints in the Sand. Yes. And in Souls on Fire, you recount Meher Baba's life, along with many other wonderful mystics who found God and fell in love with God. And in Footprints in the Sand, you recount your story as well, as how you became enthralled um, and actually had a whole complete life transformation with the inspiration um, and direction of Meher Baba. So today we're going to talk about the Meher Baba influence. It's very interesting, both you, Meredith, and you, Bill, have gone back to India quite a few times to visit uh, the Meher Baba site and the, the funeral. There's actually a town there, right, where Meher Baba was buried. Well, there's a pilgrim center. In Pune? Is that? No, no, no. It's it's about two hours from Pune. It's outside of Amanagar. Oh. So it's been a very interesting journey. So I thought I'd gather you together here today to tell your stories. You have a very interesting story. You have really been a woman who has been guided by spirit dreams. You've also studied with I, I one of my favorite, all-time favorite, psychiatrist, psychotherapist, Dr. Carl Jung. You had a chance to go to his center? Yes. Well, I've been to Zurich, studied at Zurich at the C.G. Young Center, yes. Which is, to me, just amazing because truly that is I mean, a place I've heard about, stories have been told <laughs> about. Where did you begin your journey of looking to try to help people through therapy? Well, it has to begin in finding the reality of God. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come to, to that. Um, you see, I think that or my sense is that everybody has within them this connection with God or spirit from childhood. And there are little clues that we have that we often don't recognize. And mine was, all through my childhood, all through my teens in college, I would ask people, how do you know God is real? Really? And nobody's answer ever satisfied me. They'd say, oh, because of the Bible, or didn't do, didn't do much good. You know, if God wasn't real, why? say yes to this whole sense of, of things and teachings. So, it so happened that um, it was in 1970, on December 7th, that I came to know the reality of God. You remember the date? Uh, oh, absolutely. It was at uh, about 11.30 in the morning. It, it's unforgettable. And uh, that, uh, what happened was, I was in my bedroom, my children had gone off to school, and I felt a little different that day, uh, more like in a meditative state, but at that time I knew nothing of meditation or, or of the spiritual life or of um, experiences of spirit. And so I'm in my bedroom, and suddenly through the window there comes this white light. And the white light streams in. It takes the form of condensed in the center. I was in an old Georgian house with like 10 foot ceilings. It stretches from the floor to the ceiling. It, uh, it, in the center, it's condensed in somewhat human form. But then this aura, this big oval aura, comes around. It's right at the foot of my bed, about five feet from me. And I begin to weep. 
and all I can say is you're real. You're really real. It's like the answer. I just knew that this was the energy of God. And, of course, the way our minds are, you know, part of it splits off and says, now what do you do when God's in the room? Do you ask questions or do you get on your knees and pray? Or <laughs> what do you do? And the other part is just weeping and saying, you're real, you're really real. And then an energy. Now this is visible, you have to see. An energy comes out and comes and, and right out of the center of this light being, circles me like a cocoon completely around me. And of course, this other part of my mind is saying, how did you get between me and the floor? I don't understand how this happens. And then the other part of me is just crying. And then what happens is this, it's like a corkscrew. I could feel like an opening of a wine bottle. I could feel it going through my tissues. And then it just filled my whole heart center with the most unconditional love that that's it's unimaginable the level of that love and from then from that moment I I loved God and there were a few things that I understood one that all of us are so completely loved in a way we cannot possibly comprehend so unconditionally loved the other thing was that the level on which we're the knowledge at which we are looking at life is about like kindergarten <laughs> and that there really isn't any learning outside that can bring us to this level of realization and the third thing was that there's no death there's absolutely it, it doesn't exist so this experience changed your life oh, it changed my life completely changed your perceptions it's changed everything so this warmth, this love, just stayed with me for about a month. Then it, boom, one day it was gone. Oh, I should say, when this light dispersed, I, I saw this for about 10 minutes. When it dispersed, it, it, it went like this, and it went out the window again, and I ran to the window, and I could see that light in every blade of grass, in every tree leaf, in every animal that passed by. It was the whole world was nothing in its essence but that light. So, all right, the, this leaves, and now there's a long period of a dark night of the soul. And I come to, I've come to understand this, you know, this purification period where everything that's in the way, all of our personality stuff and all of what we've learned and thought has to be unrolled so that eventually we can come back to live in that place is what you just read at the beginning to know God and to love God and know God and find him as your own self mm -hmm. um, and that can be a long journey it was a very long journey and it can be a lonely journey it's a very lonely journey mm -hmm. very long very lonely uh, as I worked through uh, with long periods of meditation and and, and the, the unwinding and the unfolding I also began at some point to say, now what here on earth at all resembles this? Where is there some contact that I can make? So I read and I uh, went to visit different ashrams, but none of them did I feel this that I had experienced. Mm -hmm. They were masters and, and wonderful beings yeah. teaching a lineage mm -hmm. and, and a way on the path, but it, it was you do what I tell you to do and then you'll be there. And, and none of them kind of embodied this. Well, at one point I did open a book that Mare Baba, that was about Mare Baba. And it began with, um, I, I am God, come to earth again. And I slammed the book closed and I said, not another Indian master saying it's God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it, it, it was the focus of my whole life. And uh, at one point, I had a dream. And in the dream, it was, and this is to answer your question of how I came to, to do the work I do. In the dream, there were a small group of us in a desert. And there was a sense that, that there were other small groups. But we weren't in contact. There was no way to contact. There was also no direction 
for the journey that we were to take in this desert kind of a place. So I look up in the sky and I can read the symbols that the clouds make into form that's direction for our journey. So I point this out to the other people and, the, and they can't see it. So we sit down and I read, I read what we're to, how we're to continue on our journey. And at the end of the dream, this being that has come to be in all my wisdom dreams says, your task is to make the journey easier, safer, and quicker for others. The end. So then I began to, I looked at becoming a, um, a minister, a priest. I went in seminaries, but uh, there was too much form for me. <laughs> and um, finally, it, it, um, uh, it came that, that, what I, that the young in, the path of uh, being a young in psychotherapist was the best way that I knew of at that mm. time to help people on their own journey, or to, not to help, but to accompany them and validate their own inner journey. But something in his works rang true. Right. Because right. he really does describe some of the process of what you go through actually pretty well to people who have gone through or have gone through the dark night of the soul. Absolutely. You begin to understand the collective unconscious. You begin to understand yes. what happens at the individualization. And, and, and right. you really, it starts to explain it pretty well, the whole process, right? Absolutely. There definitely is a way. Like Carl Jung would say, the task of life is to make the unconscious conscious. Whereas Mir Baba says, the task of life is to love God, but he also says to go through the unconscious mm. to find that pure essence. There's yeah. no way. So to me, that's the, the purification of the heart. And it's hard because many uh, groups or spiritual groups try to uh, make everything seem okay by just saying just simplified, or I call them divine rationalizations, where you just say, okay, just love God. Mm -hmm. and so, but there's, it's not as simple as that because there yeah. is a process. Yes, it's true. <laughs> it's true. There's, a, there's truth in all of it. But you still go through this process that you have to go through yourself to determine when you're really ready to completely accept that. And it yes. can be different in every single person's case. It is case. different in every person. And and to the process it takes to just accept yourself. Bill's story and, and Bill, what, you went through a similar process of seeing this. <coughs> I this never story. had heard Meredith's story before. <laughs> an and amazing I'm delighted story. to hear it. You know, I was thinking of a, a, another Meher Baba quote. He said, to, lose, to find yourself, you must it's lose nice yourself. yourself. Mm -hmm. And I had to lose myself. Mm -hmm. At 15 years of age, I rejected the church because I couldn't reconcile the idea that God is love to what the preacher would say he'd do to me if I didn't shape up. So I said, I don't want any part of any God like this. And consequently, I believed in nothing. I thought death was final. Uh, for many years, I was addicted to alcohol, to drugs, and, and I had a terrible fear of death. Then I died. I really thought I was dead, and I had an experience similar to the one Meredith described, where I felt myself bathed in God's love. God's love was everywhere surrounding me. And uh, when I came back to my body and looked around, I saw those blades of grass. In my case, it was on a beach. The grains of sand were scintillating, and, and uh, the clouds were more beautiful than clouds had ever been. And everybody I looked at was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew death does not exist. And God is love. And you, I understand, had a similar I had it at 15 years old. Mm -hmm. I had been reading the book since I'd been about 12. And I told you before, Bill, this book, wonderful book, Cosmic Consciousness, yes. had described yes. exactly both of your experiences, different, different yeah, shades, one, different, yes. Yes. Yeah, unique yes. to each person, but similar in the fact that some energy comes and completely takes a person into total, a much greater consciousness yes. and a much greater love and a much greater light. Light always accompanies the great love, always accompanies this energy. And when I was 15, I was sitting there and totally... I decided, I've been meditating for about three or four years, and I've been terrible going around school. Every book report I do would be about God, and, you know, people were, you know, it was getting to be a pain in the ass, you know? I mean, really, it was just like, they didn't want to hear about it, you know? Especially in Beverly Hills High School, they didn't want to hear about it. And I was sitting there one day meditating, and I totally 
went through the process of shutting down my body where literally I felt like I was completely leaving my body. And I did. I mean, I left my body, totally left my body and went into this unbelievable, brilliant, brilliant mm-hmm. white light. The, the light, light that incredible? is, oh, it's it's the light brighter than the brightest, brightest yes. sun. It's, it's, it's That's why it's my company is called Bright Light Productions. Mm-hmm. But it is this bright, bright light. And then the love that yes. completely takes your heart yes. and turns it inside out and just completely brings you more brilliance and more love than you can ever imagine until you just nothing's left but love and my experience even beyond that was experiencing a plane where I could answer every question yes and all my questions in my mind were answered but then I went even beyond the mental plane or the archetypal energy Mm -hmm. and I went into a stage where I um experienced nothing absolutely Mm -hmm. nothing absolutely Mm -hmm. nothing and in that nothing was absolutely everything Mm -hmm. There was everything in that nothingness and total understanding and the total love of experiencing God. And I had the choice. I could stay there or come back. And I knew something that you also experienced mm-hmm. in our talk. You, you decide that you have to come back, that you have to serve, that there is the in service. And by being in your body in every moment, you are in that energy of God. That there's no denying it. It is you. It's your every cell. It's in everything you're seeing and experiencing. And the only way you can really help and your reason for coming here is to serve and share. So, again, the service was my commitment at that point was made to serve. Mm-hmm. And not that I could talk about it to many people. And, in fact, it's only really very recently. This happened when I was 15. It's only very recently that I've started talking about That's this more. That's the same for me. This is the first time I've publicly ever... Is it ever really? Ever You've come out! It. She's come out of the closet. Out. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> well, then we're in a similar place. I finally just started to feel that maybe it's time, finally, to share this. And, and of course, Bill's book explains in your book as a cosmic consciousness your book bills talks about all these wonderful lover, lovers of god that went through similar experiences you know may her, excuse me <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing too that you found the nothing and the everything may her baba wrote a book the everything and the nothing everything is nothing you. is nothing mm-hmm. is yeah. everything mm-hmm. is right. and, and it isn't nothing as we if before you experience it, it's not the same as what you say when you say nothing. Usually, when you have the term nothing, you think, I don't have anything. It's a, it creates some <laughs> constriction or fear. It's terrible. You don't have anything. It's no thing. But by having no thing, you indeed have absolutely, absolutely everything. Because in that no thing is the creation or the creative spirit of absolutely everything. You know, and it isn't absolutely everything. Well, you it's can't beyond. It's past ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, we limit ourselves so much by our understanding of things, yeah. our perceptions, uh, and it's it's like going past all of that. Well, maybe that's reality. why Meher Bob decided not, not to, to speak. Talk. Yes, yeah. yes, he For, said we'd had all the words. Forty years, Meher Baba. Forty-four, 44 mm-hmm. years of silence, Meher Baba experienced, and you were showing me a picture of a, a, a cage that he would go into, an isolation kind of cage that he would go into to meditate and to remove himself from at times. Yes, that was to prepare the energy uh, to do his universal work, uh, to prepare the energy of the world for the our, the evolution that's going on. That you know really began some time after his death, I'm so aware of how many people came to uh, an experience of God in the 69, 70. That was when this happened to me. Yes. 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 69, my kids. Was that yours too? Uh See, mine was 70. Isn't that amazing? I say it over and over again with people Mm -hmm. that come in and tell me their stories. And it's like he said that he, he was giving this push to the world. And when he dropped the body in uh, 69, January 31st, 69. Getting chicken skin, as you're saying that. (laughs) He released all this. He released that energy energy. for for so many of us to awaken Mm -hmm. in a new way. And it's building up all the time. Yes. Yes. This is the early stage of mm-hmm. it yet. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel that the energy is, mm-hmm. and I'm, I've been meditating a lot about this, and I really do feel that more and more of this is, is the, and maybe that's why you're ready to talk about it now, maybe I am more, because I really do think it's time for now, maybe that dark night of the soul to be over, maybe all of that work that we had to do, because there's been a hard time clearing up the stuff. <laughs> there's a lot of baggage we, oh, we <laughs> accumulate, very you know. It's important. And, and it's, it's important that we all explain that even after your experience, Bill, and your experience, Mary, that it does not mean that you are perfected. 
do. You go back and you live your daily life. You we're, we're starting out now yes. with a real goal. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and, and it's, it's uh, Baba says that uh, these experiences are given to awaken us, but then they're not, they don't stay there. Yeah. We've got to be cleansed before any kind of ultimate or continuing or the next experience can come. Yeah. And you want that experience. It felt so good. Oh, it feels it's all so you good want. that you, you do. <laughs> yeah, you get and you, then that is part of the illusion as well of wanting to be addicted yes. to that experience oh, yes. again. You have to give up being addicted to meditation, to the, yeah. to the spiritual joys or whatever bliss. Yes. So you decided to in, you, you you let dreams then guide you. Of course, Carl dreams Jung have is... completely guided. There's a being, and Mir Baba does come in dreams, but there's another being that that gives direction. One of the one of the wonderful ones was where I was taken around the world, and I was shown. I must have seen 300,000 people in every walk of life. Wow. Ditch diggers and bank presidents and people in India and people in England and, and South Pole and who knows where. And, and this person, everyone was surrounded by an aura of white light. You were visiting the planet as, yes. a, as if you were an alien. You were coming down yeah. and being able to view the planet. But I could see this white light. Mm -hmm around everyone. Mm -hmm. And this being who walked with me through this path, he was dressed in a white sadra and male, and he would he would just say, see that? See that? He would just gesture. He wanted to make sure that I saw that everyone had that. And at the end of the dream, he said, that is the light of God that no one lives without. And until you look at everyone and see only that, only that, you will not really see. And I knew you had to really see it. It couldn't be that you knew it. No. But the eyes have it. Even yes. if you don't see the light around the body. And at times I do and times I don't. But I always... You sense you the can, energy of it, though, You can you? sense the energy. Mm -hmm. And every now and then, if you can get past the fear or the blocks of the personality or whatever we carry with us... But, you know, you, you work very hard on trying to remove that from people. It's definitely carry with us. But when we get to that point where we're feeling like, yeah, well, this is it right here. This is, you know, this moment, you know, I see God in you and I see God in you. And we're able to say that, you know. And it doesn't mean that we don't have to go out and pay the bills and do everything else. Right. It's just that it's not wonderful that we can experience that. And you had an interesting experience because you... As, as part of me would have loved to maybe go back and meditate and go and retreat, but I knew I had to go into service. And I guess you had to go through a similar thing with your dedication to having to help and go out and serve in the world too, right? Yes, yes. My, my love for God was so deep, I really wanted to retreat to the world, from the world and live in that state of total service <laughs> right. to God. <laughs> and th maybe thinking that was a faster way to the ultimate destination. Um, so in my journey to India, I did uh, spend eight months at one time and uh, thinking that I would... I would move there permanently at the Mayor Baba Center. At the Mayor Baba Center to serve there, but uh, when I came back, I had a dream in which Mayor Baba directed two groups of people to uh, act out skits, and he oh he loved skits. Really? Oh, he had his followers at, do skits all the time. He also loved jokes. They had to be able to tell him jokes. Really? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he loved games. In fact, he cheated at games. <laughs> he loves charades. He loves charades. Really? And, and this was like Well, that. seeing as he doesn't speak, didn't yeah. speak for 44 years, it makes sense that he would like right, charades, right? right? <laughs> it is something It would make kind of sense. For him, he was in his territory, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. He could be extremely good at that. Well, right. he had the other people. Uh -huh. he, wasn't, he, oh, he, he wasn't watched. doing it. This was his... Uh -huh. uh, David, they were doing it for him. So anyway, these two groups, he directed each group. Uh, and this, I understood, was giving me the message of what my life was to be about from that point on. So at the end, he says, through my mind, um, do you understand what I'm telling you? And I said, I'm not absolutely sure. And he said, there are two ways for you. One is the way of grace, which you, are t which you live in India. And the other is the way of service, which you are to live in the world. Mm. And uh, I knew then that um, that I was to stay and be of service because he said service, mastery is through service, uh, mastery through servitude. And uh, he was not big on grace. Let's talk about that service because I know, Bill, you also, you're a lawyer. 
you you do spend time doing your law work. You do your books. I mean, all of it's hard to kind of sometimes put a word on it because all of life can be a service. Oh, I think it if, is. If it is your attitude that you're here to just walk down the street and smile at someone or try to help or say a kind word. Or, you know what he says? He says that that may be the greatest service. He says people that go out and think they're going to be doing some great task mm -hmm. in the world. Uh, it's usually for their own ego mm -hmm. <laughs> that that the smile you give someone or the question you ask someone that you don't even know how it starts them thinking or some w words you say somewhere along the line that that may be what the greatest service is. Mm -hmm. So it isn't like we have to find some enormous destiny. Mm -hmm. How do you see? And, and in your work, you just you <clears throat> share your and you share your story through your books and your life. In my law practice, I, I went back into law after I had rejected it many years ago, after I became a seeker and a, a follower of Meher Baba. But this time, he put me in the, in the position of representing disabled people and elderly people. Mm. Whereas before, I, I used to do a lot of trial work and I enjoyed uh, a murder trial before a jury, and now he has me representing the poor, of course, to the poor by American standards. Mm -hmm. People who have been rejected by, by Social Security and told they're not disabled when perhaps they're severely disabled. And it, it's a crime that people like that have to get a lawyer to get what they're entitled to, mm. but they often do. A lot yeah. of them don't even think they can afford it, think that they can do that because they can't afford they can, it. None of them can afford it. Yeah, so most and of them don't even think that they have a chance. I, I don't charge a fee unless I win. Wow. And then and then they pay 25% of their back benefits. That's amazing. I didn't know that about you, Bill. That is, no, I had not <laughs> I still, I still have this law office functioning in, in Nashville, Tennessee, although I'm, I'm spending much of my time in Hawaii, <laughs> as you know, <laughs> much of my time that. writing now, but I have some wonderful people on my staff who are keeping the office going when I'm not there. And you are very busy, Meredith. You do quite a bit of uh, uh, dream work with people now and I service do. and counseling, mm -hmm. and people really enjoy going to you for counseling. Well, I really like that, that this mid-stage of life or the when people are ready to say, what, who am I? What's my life about? You know, I think we very often, you didn't because you had this experience at 15, but very often people live the first part of their life in kind of a karmic pattern or a cultural pattern. And then they begin to realize that uh, that's not enough. <laughs> Send, in kind of Send in the clowns. Send in the clowns. Where are the clowns? I mean, you, yeah, this is very so, true. I this mean, is, this, this is, is a life crisis practice. actually for all of society. I think. I think all of the world is kind of going through that. Especially ones people that have money. They work their whole life to get what they want, as you did, Bill. I mean, you become successful. You get what you're supposed to have, and then it's not enough, mm -hmm. and you're not happy, and you start to question what's going mm -hmm. on. Um, Pete Townsend of uh, The Who mm -hmm. was making millions of dollars, was doing extremely well with his group. And here in the, in the rock world, you know, we, we try to get past both images that people might have of the rock world, because there's a lot of images you have when you think of a group like The Who. I mean, they burn their guitars and they smash their guitars and they, you know, definitely did drugs and had a, a rather controversial <laughs> lifestyle. But Pete Townsend found... Um, Meher Baba, and yes. totally fell in love with uh, Meher Baba. In fact, put out um, an album where he has mm -hmm. a picture of Meher Baba, a wonderful picture that's become famous partly because of his album of uh, Meher Baba and a White Donkey. Also, he based his great rock opera on Meher Baba. Tommy? Partly on Baba's life, really? partly on, on the discourses of Meher Baba. Ah. These, are, these are symbolic characters from the dirty old man, mm. uh, the pinball wizard. Uh-huh. Playing the game of Maya. Oh, it's a, it's See, it's I a, didn't it's, a that. And it's amazing that a, that something based with a spiritual base like that could have been so fantastically successful. And of course, there was the song "The Seeker," and they they call me the Seeker. Yeah. Uh, nothing yeah. is everything. It's a wonderful song. Yes. Um, that and you know, so a lot of the uh, works that uh, Pete Townsend and the Who did uh, were inspired by mm -hmm. his love of of Meher Baba, Pete Townsend. Uh, wrote had a special video he did as well and the video um, I have never had a chance to see before and I was really happy Meredith this morning when you brought 
in a video that Meher, uh, of Meher Baba mm -hmm. that was done um, with the music of Pete Townsend. Yes. Which Pete Townsend produced the uh, video too. Did he really? Mm -hmm. So this is very special. We've got a, a chance for everyone to uh, take a look here at a very, very special video. Um, and the, the video is called Oprah Vardigar. Oprah Vardigar. Oprah Vardigar is, is, is a name of God oh. that Mayor Bobby used. It means God Almighty Sustainer. Ah, and this is with visuals, great, great, and very rare clips mm -hmm. of Meher Baba in various and various stages of his life. In the background. With Pete singing the words, and we're going to get a chance he, right he's, now. He's singing. He adapted the Master's Prayer, uh -huh. which Meher Baba gave us, to music. Uh -huh. And that music is in the background of this. And he sings the prayer. Yes. Wow, I'm really looking forward. I haven't seen this before, so we're going to see it together here for the first time. A uh, very special video that was produced by Pete Townsend called O Pravardigar, uh, which we can look at right now.
Special. It's, I hadn't seen that before, so it was great to uh, have experienced that because I'd seen a couple videos of Mayor Baba, and those were the very best clips of Pete Townsend did a very nice job on that. And you could see the joy and the happiness. And of course, a lot of people have heard Bobby McFerrin's song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And we were talking, Meredith, about the, the, the rest of that phrase that we don't get to hear so often because we always hear the fir- term and think mm-hmm. of sometimes Meher Baba as the one that said, don't worry, be happy, but there's really more to that, isn't yes. there? Yes, don't worry, be happy, I am helping you. And that to me is the most important part, that God is helping all of us come to God. And Meredith had a dream that she said that on the show, <laughs> yes. so now we fulfilled <laughs> <Yes>. another dream. <laughs> Both you and Bill have been back to India mm-hmm. quite a few times. Your first trip happened about what? In 1980. Uh, how, what inspired you to go there? Well, see, I never answered your question about how I happened to come to Mirababa <laughs> in this search for something here. Um, and I met a wonderful man named Charles Haynes, who came to teach religions at the college across the street from where I lived in Virginia. 
I came because the, someone else was going on a sabbatical. And I called him and asked if I could audit a course on Thomas Merton that he was going to be teaching. Because I love Jesus and the Christian mystics also. And uh, uh, so he said, yes. And I said, well, where is it going to be? And he said, well, I don't know yet. I don't want it in a classroom, really. And so I said, why don't you come teach it in my living room? So he came over, and we had tea. And he talked, told me about Mayor Baba then. And, uh, you know, I asked those typical questions like, well, what lineage and uh, who was the master before him? And he said, oh, there wasn't one. And uh, I said, well, why not? And he said, because Mir Baba is God. And uh, it wasn't that that convinced me. It was, um, it was something, first of all, about Charles' sincerity. He'd met him when he was eight years old. And there was this humility. There was this... Uh, gentleness and this sincerity that that he embodied that I liked very much and um, so I ordered this course then Charles and I taught a, a colloquy together called um, religions East and West Ooh. and for that we went and spent a week at the uh, uh, Mayor Baba Center in Myrtle Beach uh, with these 25 students that took the course and the next year, the students and I and Charles met in India. Wow. I had already moved to Hawaii. Right after teaching that course, I moved here. And uh, so we met there. And, you know, it, I'm very, I don't like say, whoa, yes to things. I, it's got to be right inside. And uh, when I was there, I had another dream. And in the dream, there were two of me. <laughs> and one me was in absolute devotion, circling a blue flame and saying, Mayor Bob is God, Mayor Bob is God, Mayor Bob is God, over and over. And the other me was looking down and said, well, if that part of me knows Mayor Bob is God, I guess I better agree with it, with this outer part of me. And Nanakar, who is a longtime uh, follower of Mayor Baba, who kept the samadhi there, uh, said to me that day, he said, you know, we all know God inside. Everyone knows God in the inner self. And then we spend our lives trying to convince this outer part of us that stands apart that it's real mm -hmm. or true. Mm -hmm. And so that was that plus something Mayor Baba said. If you see me as this form, you do not see me as I really am. Mm -hmm. Because for me, the form stood in the way. Mm -hmm. Because like you, like you, I had experienced light mm -hmm. as the as the energy of the divine. Mm -hmm. And uh, but when, with that, then I could begin to see. And like as he said, that God comes to earth every 700 to 2,000 years in order to establish the next patterns of evolution. So he came as Zoroaster, as Mohammed, as Buddha, as Christ, and this time as Mir Baba. And that just made sense to me. It was like I didn't have to be convinced and you both have been, and Bill, it's funny because we're saying how many times you both have traveled there. Mm -hmm. You've been there 18 mm -hmm. times. Bill, you've been there how many times? I've been there 12 times. Wow. We went in first in 1973. <laughs> Very but, early. Uh, it, it happened that we couldn't afford to go for 11 years after that. And then we finally, uh, after I went back into practicing law, and start representing the poorest of the poor, Baba started making me affluent. So, and I was able to go to India every year. Now, of course, Baba passed, had passed on at this point. Yes. He, he yes. left his body in 69? 69, 69 yes. correct. So you were go both going back, and now what would attract you, I mean, this is talk about a love affair, to go to visit a place where the person isn't there and hasn't what? been there uh, in 69 and to keep going. You 18 times, you 12 times. What, what attraction Well, of course, the big attraction is the Samadhi, which is the tomb where Mayor Baba was laid to rest and which is the great focal point of energy and love. And thousands of people come and the number increases every year. Besides that, there are these wonderful people who spent their lives serving Mayor Baba his Mandali, his close disciples, who uh, 
who are not like saints meditating no, in a cave somewhere. Very ordinary. <laughs> they love jokes and good food, and and uh, they're like your favorite aunts and uncles that none of them, none of us really had. Mm. They're just wonderful, wonderful people, and we spend time with them. They tell stories, and um, yeah, and and usually people have one of them that they that they really are drawn to more than. Than yes, others. Yes. Uh, it's, it's interesting to I see that. I was particularly drawn to Erich. Erich is my favorite He tells the marvelous stories uh -huh. that he got from Bob. And as a result of that, I wrote the book Souls on Fire. These stories were stimulated, were inspired by Erich, who heard them from Mayor Baba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and Erich encouraged me to put them all together. And the result of the book. Hawaii is the Samadhi such a wonderful place. Uh, Baba stayed, before he dropped the body, he stayed in the Samadhi to prepare the energy of it for the many people who would come. And we're also told that every time we go in that we leave karmic mm. collections mm -hmm. of residue. And that once you've been there, you can simply go there in your mind and, which is true, and it's the so same. So you do kind of remember it and visit there and get that energy by remembering yes. that energy pattern. Mm -hmm. Yes, though the energy there is so wonderful, too. It takes off part of your load every time you yes. go there. You lay your head down there at the foot of the tomb and, and shed some of these impressions mm -hmm. that have been binding us to, to Maya, to so, the wheel of... Baba said... Of course, not to idolize him. Oh, no, don't worship. Don't worship him. No, just love me. And to serve. Mm -hmm. And to indeed find your happiness in serving others mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in losing yourself and serving yes. others. So, is there a conflict ever to, to kind of see this love of people who are so many devoted people who are remembering him and, and by remembering him sometimes the image and doing a thing for him when they know that energy, that God energy is indeed here in you and in you and you both have experienced that do you find that you know you even need to I mean why would you need to visit that because indeed it's here with you you now. don't need to mm -hmm. you don't need to it is everywhere mm -hmm. uh, I guess once we've been there we we love to go back it's like maybe it's like going home mm. you know yeah. uh, we we like that you know I'd like to tell you a story about when Mayor Baba came to Hawaii. Oh, really? He came to Hawaii in 1956, and Erich told me to find these people. That's why I want to tell the story. He came to the airport, and he had like a six-hour layover in Honolulu at this time. And Erich and the men who were with him said, let's go walk on the beach. And Baba said, no, no, we have to sit here. Wouldn't let, him, wouldn't let them go. Sat, waited, waited. A couple, man and a woman, came up bowed to them uh, and invited them to their home for dinner. And Baba said, no, we have to stay here. They reappeared an hour later, bringing dinner to everyone. Mm. And no one there knows who this couple is. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, wonderful. And at one time we tried to find them. Of course, they may be gone now. Yeah. Uh, 56 is uh -huh. quite well, a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was a, it's a wonderful oh, it's connection a, yeah. that yeah. Mayor Baba made here. He mm -hmm. was on transit to Australia, wasn't he, at that time? Yes, he was, from mm -hmm. America to Australia. I, I, th I think we might make clear that we've been talking about Mayor Baba said this and Mayor Baba said that. He didn't say that with his his tongue. As we saw in the video, for yeah. a while he, he uh, used an alphabet board pointing the letters and then he developed his own unique gestures which his followers can, uh, can interpret and understand, but of course, mainly, he speaks in the heart. You can really, I think his smile, and I, probably after that much time of not talking, you get to the point where you realize there's not the need for words, and he could just do what he was doing, which was serving, and, and be, and smile, and be happy. Yes, you know? there, there, there are people who met Mayor Baba and didn't realize he wasn't speaking. Yes. Really? Because he was speaking to them internally. Mm -hmm. And they go out and they say, oh, that's right, he's silent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't realize that he's silent. Yes, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the things that's so important and one of the things that really drew me there. He also had no universal practices for 
the people who are with him. One person might need to meditate. One person might need to be silent. One person might need to peel potatoes in the kitchen. You know, it, there wasn't like this one way. Mm -hmm. He and even now with each person, he's working internally, very individually. Mm -hmm. uh, well, every person is unique. Yes. And every, yes. has Some of his special. followers are vegetarians. Some eat meat. Mm -hmm. He says Doesn't these matter. things are unimportant. Yeah. Yes. I, I totally agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> it, what is important is finding that peace and the happiness mm -hmm. and the joy and finding God. And loving God. Right. And loving God. And I think the hardest part once you start loving God is to stay focused in your other stuff because it becomes so wonderful. And then you mm -hmm. finally get to the point where you see that God is indeed with <laughs> everything. And you don't feel the separation anymore, and that you indeed see that you're creating all of this stuff, <laughs> including everything you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, and that that's all God, too, that you really are in this light field of God here, you know? Yes. And it's just nice to know that other people are there with you. Isn't it <laughs> wonderful? Yes. <laughs> because until I spoke to you a month or so ago, I, I hadn't realized you'd had a light experience also. Yeah. And I wonder so how many other people, I mean, I, I'm beginning to think that maybe people have, yes. and you know what, it just changes your perspective. What's interesting, I've and I've been seeing a magazine now. I got a subscription form saying, uh, find out about enlightenment. The whole thing's called enlightenment. You know, and, and in the practice I do Zen, it's like, mm -hmm. find enlightenment. But the thing is, it doesn't really matter. Mm -mm. You know, you think that that's the search. And you think that anything is the search when you're searching. <laughs> you think that that is it. But indeed, that's just... It's, not it. It's no, just, it, but it's the purification that comes through those practices. Mm -hmm. Because the danger with an experience is inflation, mm -hmm. where the ego thinks that it is that. Yeah. And, and of course, we see that in yeah. places like Jonestown and Waco, mm -hmm. uh, where people probably have had some type of authentic experience, but then they... it goes... it becomes distorted, it becomes yeah. wrong, because they haven't gone through a lengthy enough purification. Mm -hmm. And there is always that danger because, I mean, people want to sometimes take off, take the birds off themselves and put them on someone else and let someone else take mm -hmm. over, mm -hmm. which I think, and I don't want yes. people to think that Meher Baba is like that no. for people. No. Because um, you can never escape what you've got to deal with in your life, yes. you know, and, and saying you turn it over to God is not the same as saying you don't have it anymore. That's right. <laughs> it just means you turn it over to God and, like, let God help you with what you've got as mm -hmm. you do the work, mm -hmm. you know. Which <laughs> you bring that energy of God in your breath, in your smile, mm -hmm. in your laughter, in your daily process, and realize that it is all God's energy. And in your pain, in and your pain. own yeah. uh, journey. Mm hmm yeah, because it isn't all bliss. And it's, there's times you don't get clear direction. You've been lucky. You've had I'm your direction through very dreams. Very lucky. And often I don't know. My latest dream, I have no idea how to... And you don't know what it means yet. Oh, I know what it means, but I don't know how to do it. How to do it. So that will just have to be... It was another dream where I was taken around the world. And in this one, I would bow down at every uh, center just as if I was at the Samadhi. And uh, as I came up, there would be a group of people around, and I could see visually the negative energy coming off them from here down, oh. even though I knew that up here they had this light. I must have been taken 30, 50 places, you know, cities, uh, African villages, uh, towns. It was all the same. And at the end of the dream, the... Uh, this being <laughs> said to me, your task is to transform the negativity of the world. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in one way, that's what we are doing in our love, letting our love be present in, in uh, but I don't know how. You're doing it in every moment. <laughs> well, that's what we hope, <laughs> but we don't know, do we? Yeah. We don't know. Well, it's but okay what not to know, you know. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, if we knew, we would probably be wrong. I, I, there's this wonderful Korean Zen master that says, only don't know. Uh, because sometimes as soon as we think we know, then we shut the door on the possibility of being that beginner, beautiful child of God that's right. still learning, too. Or, or we distort mm -hmm. the what is to be yeah. through. The ego wants to always grasp on to, I, know, I know, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, you know. But isn't, wouldn't that be incredible if the negativity of the world was transformed? It is. Wouldn't been. that be a difference? It's happening. It is really, mm -hmm. truly happening. As you were doing it, you were doing it. You know, yes, that is, that's you the were thought. indeed doing it. That there... Uh, uh, one person, said, Carolyn Mice, uh, said uh, in, in a talk, 
that she gave, that she feels that there are people that, that become centers that, that the negative energy the world trans goes through mm -hmm. and thus is transformed. Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't even know it, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it just, just occurs. It's just, it's all energy and not ego decision. Well, we're out of time. I think we could talk for hours. And, you know, you do gather together sometimes and you do give out information. Yes. You share sometimes. Yes. I know you travel back and forth. But Meredith, you're here, <laughs> except for when you're going back to India. <laughs> you're here. So can people contact you if they want to uh, find out more, if they'd like yes. to see no, you absolutely. for counseling or talk mm -hmm. to you about your books? I know your books are at Borders and at Miracles Bookery and at Hawaiian Moons. And I know you practice in Makalam, mm -hmm. Meredith. And can they call you? Sure. That would be fine. Wonderful. Meredith Moon, you are in the book. I am in the book. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Stevens, do you want to give your number? Oh, yes. I'd be happy to. 669-1389. Great. And I've really enjoyed speaking with you here and being with you here today. It's been um, very enjoyable. And I love sharing the stories and um, the energy of that love that's present, too. And I want to thank you. Um, there are many wonderful books that people can find about Meher Baba. And that video is a wonderful video. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. That's available for people. Oh, so yes. All the books and the videos are available. Mm -hmm. The uh, Meher Spiritual Center is a... Uh, it's a place where you can order any of the books or any of the videos. Mm. And uh, I think that's going to be flashed on the screen, the, the address Great. and the email oh, good. there. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's and it's so a that wonderful has... place to visit, too. Great. You don't have to be a follower of Mayor Baba. If mm -hmm. you love God and you want to go to a beautiful, beautiful place, meet beautiful people, it's a marvelous place to go. Is that Myrtle Beach? Yes, Myrtle it Beach is. for you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing this time together. Thank you for sharing yourself with yeah, us. And that's wonderful. I'm so <laughs> glad you shared these wonderful stories. Thanks and for we'll inviting be, uh, us. Sharing our path together. Aloha. 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 Oh, wait.